came before the king, the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and have my son Solomon ride on my own mule, and bring them down to Gihon. There let the priest Zadok and the prophet uh, Nathan anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. So they did all this. They led him down to Gihon, right? Uh, the priest Zadok took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. They blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. This is part of the ancient Israelite coronation ceremony. Okay? So you're about to make Solomon the new king, and how you make someone an ancient, a king in ancient Israel is you put them on the royal ride, right? The royal donkey, right? And you march them down to the Gihon Spring, and you anoint them at the Gihon Spring. Okay? Now this story either sounds familiar to you or is going to be important to you, depending on if you know the, the other story, because it, it appears again in the Bible. Now we have uh, in the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, we have this prophecy that says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a, col uh, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And I will take, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically you have here uh, a prophetic text uh, reflecting upon this, this coronation ceremony, right? Look, here comes your king, who right, we just read, Solomon, right? You put him on the donkey, you march him down to the Gihon Spring, you anoint him the king. That's how you make somebody king in ancient Israel. See, he's righteous and victorious, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a, on a colt and foal of a donkey. Now, where have you seen that verse before? It shows up in the New Testament, in the Christian New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone say, uh, says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. Now watch this. This took place to fulfill what had spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of giant, See, your king comes to you. And then it leaves out a few words. Gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on him, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, while others cut branches of trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went on ahead of them uh, uh, of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Many of you who, who, who read this story know this as what? The triumphal entry. But now you know the background to the story. This isn't just a humble little uh, procession that just happens to go into the city. Jesus is making a very explicit claim here. He's getting the colt, he's putting on, uh, the, you know, the, the blank, and he's marching from where? He's on the Mount of Olives, which is where? Over here on the eastern side, and he's marching to Jerusalem here. So what's he have to go right by? Because you know your geography of Jerusalem. He's got to go right through the Kidron to the Gihon Spring. So what's going on here in this text? And is it a humble text? Jesus is making a claim of, divi uh, of, pardon me, of royalty. He's making a claim of basically, look at me. I'm going to sit on this donkey. I'm going to walk down to the Gihon Spring. And they're quoting the prophets. The, the, the writer, the author of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, obviously sees the parallel because he's referring to the Zechariah 9 prophecy, which in turn is talking about the coronation of kings of Israel. This is not just uh, uh, him taking a gentle, humble ride in Jerusalem. He's making a, an explicit claim. He's setting himself up to be the king of Israel, or the king of the Jews. What words did he leave out here, by the way? The Gospel of Matthew left out a couple words to em in order to emphasize that Jesus is gentle and humble. He leaves out a couple words. Do you remember? Righteous and victorious. I find it interesting that those two words were left out of the prophecy when the, the author of Matthew um, tells this story. When he, he didn't quite quote it right, he left out the victorious part where the king of Israel goes out and fights and conquers and, and then comes back victorious. 
having been saved, right, from battle, from injury, and then now gentle, basically wounded, and coming back humble on the foal of a donkey into, I think it's interesting, but that's, that's what we're dealing with with this triumphal entry text. Jesus, it's not, it's not just a humble little thing of him riding into the city. It's him making a very explicit claim to the throne of Israel. Okay? And that takes place, and we know this because of the importance of the Gihon Spring. The Gihon Spring having played a role traditionally in anointing new kings of Israel.